Hey, welcome back, and in this video we are going to compute the expectation for an exponential random variable. So we have expectation of an exponential random variable. And remember that an exponential random variable gives you a waiting time. It's how long you had to wait for an event to occur. And then the, um, the parameter for that exponential random variable is lambda, and lambda is going to be the expected number of times that the event occurs in your um, in your time interval. So we've got some finite time interval, and event can just happen at any time during that time interval, and on average, it's going to happen lambda times during the time interval. But of course, the event is showing up randomly, so we don't know for sure when it's going to happen, and we have to use a random variable to model the result. Okay, so we're going to let, I need to not underline here, let capital X be an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. Okay, so we know the PDF of an exponential random variable that looks like f sub x of x equals, um, we have two cases here. Uh, for our first case, it's going to be equal to lambda times e to the minus lambda x. So we have lambda times e to the power of minus lambda x. And that is the case if x is greater than or equal to zero. And as usual, the PDF is zero otherwise. Okay, so we've already went over that. We, that's no new information there. You know that that's the PDF. What is the new calculation that we're going to do is the expectation of that, PDX, of that PDF. So this tells us on average how long we would need to wait for the event to occur. All right, well, to compute the expectation, we integrate from negative infinity to infinity. So we have negative infinity to infinity of what? Well, of the PDF. So we have f sub x of x dx. Now, our PDF is 0 for negative numbers, so that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity. Whoops, I did it again. 0 to infinity of what? Well, it's going to be this lambda times e to the minus lambda, since now x is at least 0 for this integral. And then we also need an x out here. Gosh darn it, I did this in the last video too. <laughs> uh, if we integrate the PDF, that would give us the probability. So this integral would be 1 in both of these cases. But when I multiply by x, that's what's giving me the expectation. Remember, the expectation is the sense of an average for a continuous random variable, at least in the sense of a mean, an arithmetic mean. Add them all up and divide by how many there are. Okay, so we're going to use Wolfram Alpha to do this. Now, I can't enter lambda into Wolfram Alpha, so I'll just use, um, let's see, let's use L. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha likes the letter L, if it'll be okay with that. And we're going to integrate x times L times e to the power of minus L, uh, better put that in parentheses, minus L times x. And we're integrating that from x equals 0 to infinity. Remember, those sticks are L's. They're not 1's. And it does a better job of showing that. Whoops, I made an error here. Um, this is not what it's supposed to be. That's why I know I made an error. And my error is that I integrated from 1 to infinity. So let's go from 0 to infinity, rerun that calculation. And we indeed get one over lambda, which is the um, which is the expectation for a ex exponential random variable. So if I go back to my Maple screen here, I can just enter in one over lambda. And 
and that sort of makes sense because lambda is how many times we expect the interval the the event to occur in the time interval so how long would we expect it to take for the um, event to occur well one over that if we um, expect three events to happen during the time interval then we would expect it to take about one-third of the time interval before we see that first event. And that's exactly what's going on here.